Today we're going to cover ZX Spectrum emulation on the Wii U using RetroArch. I've become quite fond of the ZX Spectrum ever since the release of the Rare Replay. Going back and playing those old games like Saber Wolf and Underworld were really fascinating to me and there's just so much history behind the system and so many great developers got their start making games for it. Thankfully you don't have to track down the microcomputer in this day and age to play its games as emulation has become a very viable option for it. And thanks to programs like RetroArch it is available on multiple platforms including the Wii U. And that's what I'm going to show you how to get set up today so let's dive in. To get started with ZX Spectrum emulation, you need to get some ZX Spectrum games. And thankfully, thanks to the World of Spectrum website, there are quite a few thousand available to download for free legally. And you just need to head to the World of Spectrum site, go into their archive to get them. There will be a link in the description on where to find this one. But once you've sourced your ZX Spectrum games, all we need to do is put them on our Wii U SD card. So I have my Wii U SD card, I made a folder named RetroArch ROMs, which I'm putting all of my games for this tutorial series in, so let's just add ZX Spectrum to the mix. And there we go. Now, just a quick note on ZX Spectrum BIOS files. For the most part, you will not need them, but there are four machines that do require BIOS files if you want to emulate them, and they are the Pentagon 128K, Pentagon 512K, Pentagon 1024, and Scorpion 256K. If you know for a fact that you're going to be trying to emulate one of these four systems, you do need to find the BIOS files for them, and then they need to go into a subfolder named Fuse, and be named according to the RetroArch doc section here. And from there, you could just place them in your RetroArch system folder, so that's in RetroArch, Cores, System, and you'd put your Fuse folder in here. I don't have any games for those systems, I don't emulate those particular systems, so I'm not going to cover it more than that. But once you have your game files placed, you can go ahead and close out of your SD card on the computer, pop it out, and put it back in your Wii U and get it booted up. Now, just as a quick reminder, this guide is a continuation of my original RetroArch Wii U install video, so please refer back to that for install, setup help, and settings. I also go over how to install this awesome forwarder channel. Anyway, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and boot into RetroArch using either the Homebrew Launcher or the Forwarder channel. Once RetroArch is loaded, we can begin loading up our ZX Spectrum games, and to do this we need to load up the ZX Spectrum Core by going into Load Core, and then you can press up on your D-pad to go up to Sinclair, and we're going to choose ZX Spectrum Fuse. And once the core is loaded, we can go down to load content, navigate to where we put our ZX Spectrum games. So for example, SD card, RetroArch ROMs, ZX Spectrum games, and then I could choose a game and tell it to load and fuse, and it will begin to run. I don't really care for this method, it's really long and slow, so instead what I like to do is make a games playlist. So to do this, just back out to the RetroArch main menu, and over on the left is an import content tab. Now from here, go down to Manual Scan, Content Directory, choose that ZX Spectrum Games folder. So again, for me, SD card, RetroArch ROMs, ZX Spectrum, and then tell it to scan this directory. System name, we're going to go up on the D-pad until we find Sinclair, and we're going to choose ZX Spectrum. Default core, once again, press up on the D-pad to get to Sinclair, and choose ZX Spectrum Fuse. I overshot it quite a bit there. Anyway. Make sure Scan Recursively is on if you have any of your games in subfolders. And I believe that these work zipped, so if you have them zipped, make sure you have Scan Inside Archives on. But once you have these options set the way you need, you can start the scan. And once the scan is completed, you'll have a new ZX Spectrum playlist entry somewhere down here on the left. And there it is. And now I could just go into my playlist entry, select a game, press A, press A again to let it run. And there we go, ZX Spectrum Games up and running on the Wii U. 
But before we can begin playing, there is a bit of setup required in the control department because ZX Spectrum was again a microcomputer, so all it had by default was a keyboard. So I definitely recommend hooking up a keyboard to your Wii U. And yes, they do work on the Wii U. I found that out. They do work. Awesome. So hook up a keyboard to your Wii U to get the best experience out of ZX Spectrum games. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck using a virtual keypad that you can activate with the select button. But you can't really do this quickly to play games with, so it's not ideal to actually play games that only use keyboard input. But once you have a keyboard hooked up to your Wii U, we need to change some options in our RetroArch menu here. So press the home button on your Wii U gamepad to open up your RetroArch quick menu. And we're going to scroll down to controls. Press A, go down to port 1 controls. And I like to have this one set to Kempston Joystick. Most of the games I have seem to work with Kempston Joystick, so I like to have this set to Kempston. But once you have this set, the game might require a different one, so there's Sinclair, Sinclair 2, Timex, Timex, Fuller, Cursor. But again, Kempston seems to have the most general overall compatibility, so I like to use it. But anyway, once that's set, we need to go down to port 3 controls, and we need to change the device type to the Sinclair keyboard. This will let us use our physical keyboard inside the ZX Spectrum emulator. Once you have both of those options set, we can resume the game and begin playing. So I'm going to press any key on my physical keyboard. There we go. And now I can begin playing Salamander here, either with the keyboard. I could bind my keys by pressing K. So press a key for moving up, press a key for moving down, left, right, and fire. So I can begin playing using my physical keyboard by pressing one or two. And there we go, I'm using my physical keyboard to play a ZX Spectrum game. Or I could press J on my physical keyboard and switch it over to my Wii U gamepad. And then I could then again press one on my keyboard, or I could press select on my gamepad and press 1 in here to begin playing the game using my gamepad. So there we go, now I'm playing the game using the Wii U gamepad. Both totally viable options and great options to have, especially for ZX Spectrum with so many games relying on a keyboard for input. But that's pretty much going to cover it for basic setup. You get the games onto your Wii USD card, load up the core, and start playing them after you get those controls set up. So now let's go ahead and talk about some of the more advanced core options available within Fuse. So once again, pressing the home button on our Wii U gamepad, we can go into the RetroArt quick menu. This time we're going to scroll down to options. And our first option is to select the type of ZX Spectrum model that we're emulating. By default, it is set to the 48K. Again, you could change this between a number of different ZX Spectrum units, including the 128K, the Timex systems, or the 16K. Just remember that for the Pentagon 128, 512, 1024, and Scorpion 256K, you do need to have extra BIOS files that I did not cover in this video. So, set the system that you need, restart the content, and you're off playing with that particular system type. The next option is to hide the video border. I'd just leave this disabled. The next option is tape fast load. You want this on, otherwise you're going to be sitting around waiting for the games to load for a while, and it is pretty slow. Tapes were very slow back in the day. The next option is to emulate the tape load sound. So if you turn off tape fast load, it'll actually play like tape loading sounds to mimic what it was like back in the day. I think that's a pretty cool touch. The next option is to choose your speaker type. So you could choose between... Uh, internal beeper, unfiltered, or a TV speaker. I leave it on TV speaker. Next, you could try to mimic stereo separation, so you can choose ACB or ABC. Next, we have the transparent keyboard overlay. Leave this on. And then you could set the time to release keys in milliseconds. I leave this at 500. I haven't had an issue with that. If you need it to be smaller, you can make it smaller if needed, or you can make it bigger. Next are a bunch of joypad mappings. I don't mess with this because I could just use the control options within RetroArch itself to get the controls how I want them, so I don't mess with them here. But if you want to, you can set specific key mappings here to different keyboard keys of the ZX Spectrum. A couple things you can mess around with in here. The most important is probably going to be the ZX, um, the ZX Spectrum system model itself. 
Now, normally in this part of the video, I would cover shaders for ZX Spectrum games, but Wii U shaders are odd, so I'm going to make a dedicated Wii U shader video at the end of the core video, so stay tuned for that. But once you have these options set the way you want, make sure you save them as a core override, so that way every time you load up a ZX Spectrum game, these are the options that are going to greet you. But that's going to do it for ZX Spectrum emulation on the Wii U. Such a fantastic, historic little system. And it's so awesome that we can play it on a number of devices these days, including the Wii U, and have full keyboard functionality to really bring the experience home. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below, and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor, and please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live really goes a long way to helping out the channel, and I am just so grateful to all of you for that. If you're feeling particularly generous and want to help support the channel further, you can always check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place running, so I am extremely grateful to all of you for the consideration, and for all of my current champions, you freaking rock stars, you keeping this place going. Thank you so much. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome, and we will see you all back next video.